Hello everyone, my name is Hightech Man. Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be installing the Retro Pie. We're going to be making our own Retro Pie. It's a very simple procedure. Uh, it's very fun to do. I've seen people do like little mini Game Boys and things like that and uh, make their own main arcade systems and just all in general have a really good project experience with this. Uh, it's a very simple tutorial. All we're going to need are the following things. I'll put them on the screen right now and you'll be able to find links to all of those in the description down below of all the things that I used. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is go to retropie.org.uk. This will go to their main site. And we're going to go ahead and click on download. Now, depending on what kind of Raspberry Pi you have, if you have the Pi Zero or Pi One, go ahead and get that the first link. If you have the Pi Two or the Pi Three, like I have and we'll be using during this tutorial, go ahead and click on the second one. This will go ahead and download the image file. This will take a few minutes, so just give it some time. Okay, so once you've got that downloaded, go ahead and extract the RetroPie image to your desktop. And what we're going to do is we're going to get our micro SD card ready to go. So I've already gone, I already went on ahead and put it inside of an enclosure and into a uh, USB reader. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in and get our things ready. While that thing is still extracting though, you can go ahead and run the Win32 Disk Imager program. Now, if you don't know what that is, I will leave a link down in the description down below for the Windows users. Basically, this is what we're going to use to burn the image to the actual micro SD card. So just go ahead and double click it once you're ready. And this here's the interface. Now what we're gonna do is we're just going to go ahead and find the RetroPie image. And what I did is I went on ahead and extracted it to the desktop. So go to desktop and then go ahead and look for RetroPie right there and open. And then we wanna make sure that our correct uh, disk is selected. So I'm just gonna verify that this is indeed sec uh, boot G. So device G, that's correct. We're gonna hit right. And it's gonna, it's this is actually gonna delete everything that's on the current micro SD card. So you need to make sure that you're ready to do this. So just say yes, if you're sure. Now, just a quick little thing that you wanna note here is that uh, mine is actually transferring at quite a faster rate. That's because I use a different type of uh, micro SD card. I actually went out and bought the, uh, what is it, the Pro Extreme micro SD cards. They're a little more expensive, but they're actually worth the price in my opinion because it'll actually transfer things to and from the card a lot faster. So that means if you're doing any kind of like computing that requires a little bit more uh, transfer rate, that'd be the way to do it. These are the kind of cards that you would use for 4K cameras. So that's just another thing to keep in mind. All right, so once the write has been successful, click on OK and exit. And now we're done with part one, which is basically adding the uh, image to the SD card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch gears and I'm going to move to the RetroPie. So give me one second. All right, so as you can see here right now, it's resizing the file system, which is completely normal. Um, just give it some time to go ahead and go through its normal paces because you're going to see a bunch of line of code just go by. Give it some time and it'll go ahead and configure itself. What I've also done is I've went on ahead and added a wireless keyboard mouse to my RetroPie here. So that way I can control it normally if I need to. But we will also, we will be configuring it for a remote control, your little USB gamepad, whether it's going to be a SNES controller or if you want to use a, a more advanced Microsoft Xbox One controller, it doesn't matter. It'll recognize either or. Okay, so the first screen you're going to see here is the welcome screen. It hasn't detected any game pads. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and use my keyboard temporarily, and, and then after that, we'll configure a game pad again. So basically, you'd hold the letter, the A button. So in, in this case, in my case, it's going to be a keyboard. So I'm just going to hold the regular uh, letter A, and then you can just go ahead and work on your directional pad. Just go ahead and put anything that you want here. The things that really matter here are the start, select, A, and B buttons along with up, down, left, right for the directional pad. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in and be right back. Now just a quick note too, also, if you mess up on a key and you wanna go back, just wait until you get to the end and then you can just hit up or on your directional pad or in my case, my keyboard, and you can go back and edit it, edit the right key if you'd like it. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm good with what I have here. So I'm just gonna hit uh, start. And okay, so now we're here on our generic window. So here's the RetroPie uh, 
interface. It's very simple right now. There's no ROMs on it, so I'm just going to go ahead and load the settings for the time being because right now I want to get a few things configured. See, we can configure things from like the audio if we want it to come out via the HDMI port or the headphone jack in the Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, Bluetooth. If your Raspberry Pi comes with the Bluetooth like the Retro Pi or the Retro Pi, like the Raspberry Pi 3 does, you can actually configure your PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 3 controller through Bluetooth, which is it's cool function, but the problem is I've heard reports that people tell me that it doesn't always work properly, but you can always look out for scripts for things like that. What we want to do is we want to go down to Wi-Fi because I want to configure the Wi-Fi because this RetroPie has a Wi-Fi chip in it, or this, yeah, RetroPie. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to my Wi-Fi network and I will be right back. Something else to take note here is that you'd also want to make sure that you know what your IP address is. So mine is going to be 0.20. So I'm going to make a mental note of that. And what we're ready to do now is we have 32, I put a 32 gigabyte card in here. You can go as high as you want to go. Uh, I have a 128 gigabyte card that I can use for later, but for the moment I just put 32 gigs. Now we are ready to start importing ROMs into the computer or into the RetroPie. But this is the part where I put up a big disclaimer and say, okay, we're dealing with ROMs now, so here's your legality spew. Um, I technically you're only supposed to put ROMs that you legally own. So just so you know, before I even start, I'm going to be demoing this with Super Mario 64 and Super Mario World. But you can see I do own these copies of these games. So anyways, now that all that's out of the way, let's get to the fun part. One more thing before we move to the fun part, I'm going to configure our separate controller. In this case, I'm going to do the SNES controller. And this is just a basic controller that you can find on Amazon. They're like 10, 20 bucks. So just go ahead and plug it in to the RetroPie. Once it's plugged into the RetroPie, all you have to do is hit your start button. In this case, it'll be for options. So in my case, it's going to be enter. And then you want to go down to configure input. Once you select configure input, it'll try to detect the controller that's here. So in this case, it detected one gamepad. So I'm going to hold down the A button on my controller. So USB gamepad. So it's going to do just this real quickly. So once you've configured all the things that you have in your controller, if your controller doesn't have things like the left trigger or the right trigger, just hold any button to skip it. So I'm just going to hold these but hold down a button every time now to uh, not define it. All right, and now I've configured the uh, controller to actually work with the Raspberry Pi. It's actually kind of cool. I like it a lot. So now we're going to transfer ROMs to the Retro Pi. Okay, so there are two ways to do this. Personally, there I like to do things via the wireless, so I will show you how to do that second. But this is a much more practical response, whereas you take your USB flash drive and you're able to transfer the ROMs from your computer to the RetroPie. The RetroPie automatically knows if there is a flash drive in there, and it has a special script already pre-built into it to automatically transfer files from the flash drive to the RetroPie. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and initiate that script by plugging in my flash drive with the computer and I'm going to open the file and there's nothing on this flash drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new file folder and I'm going to call it RetroPy. Exactly the way you see it, just like that. Once you have that file folder in there, go ahead and exit and unplug your flash drive. Now plug in the flash drive into your RetroPy. And what you're going to see is you're going to see it do an interface. It'll blink for a moment and then stop. And then what it's doing right now is it's actually writing files to the flash drive. Uh, so that way it'll basically have all the ROMs or all the ROMs. It'll have all the different systems that it supports. And then once it's done transferring all of those empty folders to your flash drive, it'll take about... 10, 20 seconds, depending on how fast your flash drive is. I usually leave it in there for about 45 seconds. You'll know when your flash drive is inactive because it'll either be not have the light on or in the case of you using a sand disk flash drive, the light will just pulse in and out. So in my case, it's already done. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug it and plug it back into my computer and open the file. And inside the RetroPie, you'll see we have BIOS, Configure, and ROMs. So I didn't do that. That was the, all the RetroPie. So when you double-click on ROMs, you'll see all the different systems that the RetroPie supports. In this case, I have a ROM for Super Mario 64 and Super Mario World. So I'm going to double-click the N64, drag and drop Super Mario 64 in there. And then I'm also going to put the uh, Super Nintendo, or SNES, for you retro people out there. And, ret and copy and paste those over, and I'm done. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to unplug the flash drive, plug the flash drive back into the RetroPie, 
And here's the biggest gripe that I have about the RetroPie is it doesn't really have an interface telling you, hey, you know, I'm transferring stuff right now to the RetroPie, so don't do anything. You kind of have to go based off of the flash drive itself. Uh, the flash drive will, you know, blink rapidly and then it'll just go back to its pulsing or, you know, it won't even blink at all. So in my case, it looks like it's already done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and reset the Raspberry Pi. Now there's a proper way to do this. How I'm going to do it is I'm going to go into my options or in this case, I'm going to hit start and then I'm going to go down to quit and then it's going to say reset emulation station. That's what you want to select. You don't actually want to restart the whole system. Just restart the emulation station. That's like the emulation for the retro pie. So once it's reset, you can see here I've got Nintendo 64 and Super Nintendo. So I'm going to go ahead and select the Super Nintendo ROM that I have selected here. And you can see there's Super Mario World USA. Now you can, I've seen people do things like having custom skins and there's, the, the possibilities are endless for this. It's lots of fun. You just gotta have to go ahead and delve deeper into it. Now this is something I also, I also wanted to show you guys. You can see there for a brief moment, I have to freeze the frame here, but it said to configure your RetroPie for the settings for your TV. Now, if you have problems with like scan lines on your TV or it's over scanning or whatever, this is where you, you wanna select, hit a button to change these options. Now you can see down here, we've got different options for the game, whether we wanna do a different kind of emulator or the, change the video resolution, whatever. Uh, I'm not gonna mess with any of these because for right now, it's just fine for me. So I'm just gonna hit just regular launch the game. So let's launch the game real quickly. And you can see there that we have a retro pie ready to go with running Super Mario World. And here I've got my regular controller. It's actually kind of cool. I, I like, I like uh, playing these old games. But like I said, I've got, I actually own this game, so whatever. I'm also going to put a list of commands on screen right now that you'll see. These commands will actually show you or tell you what you can do in order to exit a game when you're in the emulation station. So in this case, like for example, if you hit start and select at the same time, it'll bring you back to the main page. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to transfer ROMs via Wi-Fi. Now what you want to do is you want to download a program called WinSCP. That's the program right here. I'll have a link down in the description below for the right one. And what we're going to do is you're going to go ahead and put in your RetroPie's IP address. So in this case, my RetroPie was 0 0.20. And the standard username and password is will work just fine for your retro pie. So I think I believe it's pie and then raspberry and then just hit log in and just go ahead and say yes to this. It's not a big deal. And then you can see here we have all of our different setups. If you double click on retro pie and then ROMs, you'll see here this is the same uh, file structure that you had on your flash drive. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to go ahead and go to my N64 and remove Super Mario 64 hit OK, and then I'm done. I'm just gonna, t I'm gonna go back to the RetroPie now and see if it removed it from the main screen. And as always, we gotta go ahead and go down to quit in order to get this uh, option to refresh. Let's go ahead and hit quit, and then restart emulation station. And we should only be able to see now the Super Nintendo uh, emulation. And see, that's all we see now, it's just Super Nintendo. We don't see N64 because we deleted it. And honestly, I think that's the fastest way to do it, is to go through the Wi-Fi, because when you have it connected, there's, there's no reason to have a flash drive handy, unless you're in an area that doesn't have Wi-Fi and you can't transfer these things to it. Either way, it's all up to you. You go ahead and be creative about it. I mean, personally, I'm gonna make a little 3D printed mini NES uh, cartridge for this, so I can put the Raspberry Pi in there and have my own classic NES, only it'll be a hundred times better because I can have whatever I want on it. Personally, I, I think that's cooler, but it's all up to you. Anyways, thank you very much everyone for watching. If you liked that video, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and share the video with your friends. And as always, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Did you like that tutorial? Well, here's some other tutorials for you to consider. I worked really hard for to get these things out to you guys and make them as simple as possible. So go ahead and give it a view. Some of them have really good comment sections down below. 